China threatens mortal combat. Over TikTok, U.S. economic bailout money goes to Chinese companies. And pandas are destroying the environment. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. So I've been saying this for a long time now, but the U.S. and China are fighting another Cold War. But I was wrong, because Chinese state-run media says it's time for Mortal Kombat! Life really does imitate art. That's according to this editorial from state-run China Daily. On Thursday, the U.S. Senate unanimously passed a bill that would ban the video-sharing app TikTok on all government employees' devices. And then on Thursday night, President Trump kicked it up a notch. He issued an executive order completely banning TikTok for everyone in the United States, as well as another executive order banning WeChat, a messaging, social media, and electronic payment application owned by the Chinese company Tencent. In 45 days, Americans will be banned from making any transactions with the parent companies of TikTok and WeChat. What that means exactly is not clear yet. There's been widespread concern in the U.S. government over TikTok because TikTok automatically captures vast swaths of information from its users. And this data collection threatens to allow the Chinese Communist Party access to Americans' personal and proprietary information. But there's been less attention on WeChat because it's not as widely used. But in many ways, WeChat is a bigger problem than TikTok. But I can't get into all that here. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a separate episode on WeChat. So TikTok, like WeChat, will be banned in America starting on September 20th. That is, unless TikTok is sold to an American company that will keep user data out of the hands of the Chinese authorities. Now, TikTok has obviously denied that there are any national security issues. In fact, it says there's no way it's influenced by the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, TikTok is a totally private company. A totally private company that happens to be wholly owned by ByteDance, which is required by law to be influenced by the Chinese Communist Party. Of course, Communist Party mouthpiece China Daily backed up TikTok by saying the U.S.'s decision to ban it leaves China no choice except submission or mortal combat in the tech realm. Funny, the U.S. didn't threaten China with mortal combat when China banned Twitter, or Facebook, or YouTube. If you'd like a full rundown of the possible TikTok ban, check out my recent episode of America Uncovered. Yeah, the lines between these two shows are really starting to blur. But if China's trying to play mortal combat, it seems to have angered the god of thunder, Raiden. A building was hit by a lightning bolt. A flash of what looked to be fire and spark shot down the side of the building and struck the ground. Maybe someone has lost the mandate of heaven. What's that, Shelley? Okay, I am being told that the Chinese Communist Party has canceled the mandate of heaven. I guess everything's fine then. Speaking of things that are totally fine, so you know how the U.S. economy is crashing because of the coronavirus? Or what I call the CCP virus, because it spread after the Chinese Communist Party tried to cover it up instead of dealing with it. Well, the economic collapse, especially worldwide, may be worse than feared. Starting in March, the U.S. government stepped in to bail out some of the big investors as well as small businesses in the U.S. But some of that small business relief the U.S. government handed out went to Chinese-owned companies. Millions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer money have flowed to China from the $660 billion Paycheck Protection Program that was created in March to be a lifeline for struggling small businesses in the United States. Apparently, U.S. subsidiaries of foreign firms were allowed to apply. And they did. $192 million to $419 million has gone to more than 125 companies that Chinese entities own or invest in. 2020, you're the year that keeps on giving. Really, you can stop now. Over in Hong Kong on August 1st, they celebrated Army Day. 
Yes, the people of Hong Kong love to celebrate the People's Liberation Army. And Chinese troops performed this wonderful song and dance number. It was called, I Am a Bullet. It involves a lot of repeating, I am a bullet. As well as friendly messages like, anyone who makes waves will be destroyed on the spot. Who is that addressed to? The people of Hong Kong? Well, that's what you get when this is China's top military commander. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has offered up his weekly criticism of the Chinese Communist Party. This time, he criticized the Hong Kong government's delay of its election by an entire year, supposedly because of the coronavirus. Pompeo said there is no valid reason for such a lengthy delay. Pompeo also said the U.S. would defend exiled Hong Kong activists wanted by Beijing. That's after Hong Kong police ordered the arrest of six pro-democracy activists who have fled Hong Kong. And one of them, Samuel Chu, is a U.S. citizen. Yeah, Hong Kong police are really making waves. Oh wait, no! Meanwhile, U.S. researchers should really stop helping China's military. This report by the Hoover Institution at Stanford University found more than 250 published research collaborations between scholars based in the United States and counterparts from seven universities in the People's Republic of China that are integral to that nation's defense research and industrial base. I hear that includes research on developing human bullet hybrids. As the report says, the risks to national security are serious since such diversions could erode or eliminate U.S. military superiority with lethal consequences in the event of an armed conflict. This study also comes on the heels of this separate study, which says New Zealand's universities and businesses are providing cutting-edge scientific expertise with military end use to China's military. 2020, you can really stop giving now. A Chinese woman living in Japan traveled back to China for a heart transplant. It was a big deal, with the Chinese embassy in Japan even tweeting about it. And lots of Chinese media wrote about it, like this article that called it a cross-border relay of love. Yes, the story really was heartwarming, except for one very disturbing detail. Within 10 days, Yunin Hospital in Wuhan City was able to find three hearts that were ready to be transplanted to Lingling. Turns out, the first heart had a small defect. The woman had a fever when the second one came, which made the transplant too risky, but the third heart was just right. What is this, Goldilocks and the three heart transplants? Now normally, it can take years to find even one organ, because you have to wait for a matching donor to die usually in an accident. So this woman getting three hearts in a row is pretty much impossible. Unless, of course, China has a bank of living people who can be harvested for their organs on demand. Which is exactly what an independent tribunal found last year, that China forcibly harvests organs from detainees. So those three transplants were not impossible, just deeply unethical. Of course, the Chinese media articles claimed that these were hearts from voluntary donors, but I'm a little skeptical. Especially since scientists have found that China is likely faking their organ donation data to conceal their forced organ harvesting. Wait, China faking data? I know, right? And finally, China's efforts to save the pandas may have devastated other species. According to this study by a joint China-United States team, the Chinese Communist Party said pandas were an umbrella species, which means they argued efforts to save the pandas would result in the preservation of other endangered species. Turns out, nope. Researchers found four species, leopards, snow leopards, wolves, and doles, have vanished from many of these panda reserves since they were set up about 50 to 60 years ago. And according to that study, that places the larger ecosystem at risk. Great. The Chinese Communist Party has spent decades using pandas for propaganda. Pandas, so soft and cuddly and harmless. 
But in reality, they're taking all of the resources for themselves and eliminating everyone else. Wait, yeah, the panda is a perfect symbol for the Chinese Communist Party. And now is the time when I answer questions from you, fans of the show who support what we do on the crowdfunding website, Patreon. I call you guys the 50 Cent Army. Andrew asks, are you worried about recent litigation against Patreon? What will the demise of Patreon mean for China Uncensored? Is there an alternative platform that can be used to support China Uncensored? Very good question. So if you hadn't heard, here's what happened. Patreon banned someone named Owen Benjamin. The people who supported him on Patreon sued Patreon. Under Patreon's terms of service, these complaints would have to be settled in arbitration, not in court. And under California law, Patreon must pay in advance all the arbitration fees in the case involving Benjamin's backers. Patreon tried to file an injunction against paying the fees, but lost. They also changed their terms of service in a way that might violate California law. For now, the injunction means the backers of any large creator banned by Patreon can have those backers move for arbitration against Patreon, and Patreon will have to pay the fees up front. And some creators seem to be starting the process already. So the question is, how many people will file for arbitration, and how much money would Patreon have to fork out? If it's a huge amount, Patreon might not be able to continue and they'd shut down then we'd lose the main means we have of supporting China Uncensored. In that case, we'd have to move to another platform. We're watching the situation, but for now, we're planning to stay on Patreon because it's still the easiest way for you to contribute and for us to provide benefits to supporters. And with YouTube demonetizing our show so much, we really do rely on your Patreon support to keep us going. But you can also support us through PayPal or Bitcoin. The links are below. So Andrew, thank you for your support. And for other folks who are interested, you can support China Uncensored for as little as a dollar an episode. Visit patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. As a way of saying thank you, I'll answer your questions at the end of these episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.